All right, take three. After the phone, the dog, and everything else has gone off while I'm trying to make this, let's see if we can get this little tutorial underway. So I'm going to do a couple things quickly here. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool over here. This is very similar to the eyedropper. If you just click on the color palette, you'll notice there's a little eyedropper you can move around. And I'm going to pick two colors within this photo, so I'm going to pick a dark blue to add to the palette and then I'm going to switch to a lighter blue and notice I don't really even need to have the color palette open as long as I'm on the tool and you notice there I get all the different colors here so I'm going to pick something fairly light and then I'm actually going to put a gradient in behind on the background layer so I can just apply that okay that's kind of okay it's not too bad I'm going to go the other direction though I think I want the dark at the top so there's my background gradient using colors that were found in the original image so there's a little more harmo harmony there. I'm then going to move to the move tool, the little arrow guy here. And you'll notice the top is all grayed out. I can't use any of those. When I start to select different layers those tools become active and I can do a whole bunch of different alignments. The one I'm going to choose though is the center alignment so everything's going to line up dead center just like that. Now, the other tool I can use while I'm on the Move tool is these things called Guides, and you can just drag them down. They're not part of the image. Uh, they just float over top, and that's one way you can control or give yourself some working guidelines uh, in terms of where you want text, where you want images to end up. Use them in combination with the ruler. So, for example, I'm going to put this right on this half-inch mark here. Okay, so I know I have about half an inch from the top to here. Uh, if I scroll in and scroll out those gu guides move with the the image so the next thing I want to do is I want to take this layer with the picture here of the guitar guy Ed Roland and I want to just change the size a little bit so I'm going to drag it up to the guide and you'll notice it likes to snap to the guide and now I can do this changing the size of it one of two ways I can either go to edit transform and I can play with these different options I could do free transform or you'll notice a shortcut here is Command T. That's the one I normally use. And then I get these little boxes on the edges which allow me to change the size. Now you have to be careful. If you do grab these boxes and start moving it around, you can change the aspect ratio, which makes Ed look really, really wide or really, really skinny. The key to making the uh, ratio stay the same is to hold down Shift. So I'm just going to escape that for a minute. I'm going to start again. I hold down Shift. And now, doesn't matter what I grab, oops, pardon me, let me try that again. Shift on the corners, shift here on the corners, and that'll keep the aspect ratio the same. So now I don't distort Ed, make him look funny. The problem is, now that I've transformed it, I can see that I'm offline. So all I have to do is go back to the Move tool, make sure I highlight the background and Layer 1, and go Center Alignment, and I'm back in the middle. Okay, and the transform tool works on text as well. So I'm on the collective soul layer. I'm going to command T and I can drag it over and I can make it a bit larger if I want. Something like that. And now it's a bit larger. If I want to change the color, I'm not particularly happy with collective soul and yellow. I'm going to highlight the, uh, the text tool, click on that layer, triple click should grab everything. You'll notice the color up here is yellow. So if I click on that, I get another eyedropper, and I'm just going to make it a light blue, something like that. Again, I'm choosing colors from the actual picture, so they're all kind of harmonious. And then I'm going to do the, uh, the same with shine. So I'll call it move to the shine layer, move it down, command T, and then I'm just going to make that a little bigger. And I want it to really stand out and pop. So I'm going to, again, line it up on the background, center it, move to my text tool, click on it, and change the color to white. And click OK, and there's my shine in white. And then the last thing is Ed Roland. I'm just going to float that. Oops. Make sure you're on the right letter. There we are. I'm going to take the Ed Roland, and I'm just going to change the color on it. I'm happy with the size. I don't like the purple, though. So I triple click to try and get all that, or double click to try and get all that. Just keep clicking until it's all highlighted. And then I'm just going to pick another color. So I'm going to pick a real light blue here. Something like that. So there's our 
almost fi finished image. These guides might be a little annoying. You can either just drag them away like such, or you can go up to view and say clear guides. There we are. If you want to look at the image closer, you can hold down alt and use your scroll wheel and that will enlarge the image. I can zoom back and forth. Or I can use this tool over here called the magnifying glass. You see there's little pluses. You hit the alt button it changes to minuses. So zooming in and zooming out is easy. And you have these pre presets, actual, fill screen, etc. So there's our first image. Task one, done.